Hello, Internet, and welcome to the Story Nook. Go ahead and grab your tea, your coffee, your hot cocoa, whatever it is you want. I am currently recording this after the new year. I hope you all had a great new year. Um, we're having a bit of a plague scare at my house, uh, but hopefully things will work itself out. I'm feeling all right, so I'm going to go ahead and record a few episodes. Um, but let's go ahead and start the day off good with some wholesome stories. And our first wholesome story is by Find a Find Ab Hair Hawk Light. Made a cashier fear for her life for a second. I have red hair. Sorry, alarm. I have red hair and was at the store the other day picking up some stuff for Thanksgiving. I leave my husband in line to run back for a forgotten item. I come back but don't get in line since they were out. I am looking at things on their discount rack. When my husband said, you can use this line to me, he points to a sign that says, attention, cashier is allergic to lavender, sage, and ginger. The cashier did not notice our conversation since she was finishing up with the person in front of us. She started to check us out when I said, oh no, you're allergic to gingers, as I grabbed my red hair. In a moment of panic, her eyes go from me to out items looking for one of the things she is allergic to. Then the look of realization comes across her face as her eyes cut back to me, still grasping my red hair. And she starts laughing, deep, infectious belly laughing, which makes my husband, the back boy, and me start laughing. Nearby cashiers had not heard the exchange, only her laugh was smiling as well. She said she was scared at first, that I had some of the cut ginger they sold, so it took her a minute, and it was the funniest thing he heard all day, and she really needed to pick me up. This time of year is hard on her, since she is allergic to most to what most people buy and make. We showed her a trick to always keeping a small dose of Benadryl safe in our pocket that would be waterproof. Oh, that, that's adorable. And, yeah, cashiers, especially, like, during this time of year, they they really need a pick-me-up. So, that's adorable. And our next post is by user Luke underscore 666 underscore DWS. And it says, Athletes Caring True Sportsmanship. And it links to another post from Get Motivated that was posted by Reagan24. And it's an image, and it says, 17-year-old Megan Vogel was in last place in the 3,200-meter run when she caught up to the competitor Arden McMath whose body was giving out. Instead of running past her to avoid the last place finish, Vogel put McMath's arms around her shoulders and carried her 30 meters and then pushed her over. (coughs) Which I think is absolutely adorable. Because you can see, like, this person is very tired and she's just like, you know what, I might be slow, but I'm going to bring you with me. And that is beautiful and fantastic sportsmanship. So that is absolutely precious. And forgive my cough, a little bit itchy. Our next post is by user LadyDeaf1138. And it's titled, Mr. Rogers meant so much to me as a kid. So I know this might be something commonly noted, but I've never gotten to share this before. I didn't watch TV much as a kid, but Mr. Rogers was my favorite. 
My mother always found him a little creepy, but she let my brothers and I watch it anyway. We didn't always have TV, so I never got to see the final episode until years later, long after I had moved out. I was going through a lot with PTSD and depression, and I wasn't feeling myself at all. My mother pulled me aside one day and said she had something to show me. Without another word, she pulled up the final episode on YouTube. I didn't think I could properly convey my feelings through words, but I definitely cried. My heart exploded with mixed emotions that I didn't know how to express. Somehow, my mom understood dumb. To this day, when I need to pick me up for a good cry, I watch the clip of his last goodbye on the show. Which I think is absolutely precious. Because, like, certain things that cause that nostalgia, especially, like, a children's show that you grew up watching, I think it's very comforting. So, yeah. Our next post is by Very Large Chickadee. And it is titled, A Small Child to Hand Feed Me on a Trail on Ontario. Oh no, a small child tried to hand feed me on a trail on Ontario. Uh, I missed a word. That was my bad. Mm, congestion. I thought I was writing. I thought of writing this a while ago, but didn't as I thought it was insignificant and not particularly interesting. But I thought of sharing as I also want to hear your happy stories. The following happened on a cool Sunday. Saturday afternoon at the end of February. The week had been cold and gray, the hike enjoyable and mentally replenishing. I read that's called soft fascination. We were now, my brother and I, on our way back a couple hundred meters away from the parking lot. I see a family that I think arrived a few moments earlier. Mother, father, and son. The child is very young and small, not quite a toddler, maybe three or four, which to me is kind of a toddler. I thought toddler started at two, but maybe not. But I'm bad at mis estimating age that young. He is trying to hand feed birds. He walks and stops energetically and decisively. He is focused on his task. I see a man with a plan. He was determined to closely observe birds eating from his hand. He tries different hand heights and tries different spots. He seems a little impatient, but appears to be settling on this side of the trail, hand extended per perpendicularly to it. In a good mood and seeing this kid seriously tackling bird hunger makes me laugh a bit. The father has grains on his hands too, but starts turning away from the trail towards the trees to leave ample room for us to pass through. The mother is on the other side of the trail near a bird feeder or so, probably getting her own grains or something. Now, I'm quite an introvert and not used to joking with strangers, but I think of making a small joke before leaving the wonderful trail for a short instant. I think of going to the father and ask him for a grain. Can I have a grain? A pick, pick a grain from his hand, thank him and pretend to eat it and leave. That's my idea. I wear the... N95 mask hanging from my hand, and as I come closer to the family, decide at the last second to play this trick on the small child instead. I walk toward the other side of the trail and start a turn toward the child. I step about six feet away from him. I see the father stop too, facing us, watching me intensively. He can see everything clearly as we are perpendicular to the trail walking direction. The child looks up at me. I'm a bit of an apprehension, but his look seems a bit annoyed, too. What do you want? How dare you interrupt my bird feeding session with that, that kind of look? I bend forward to face his hand, put one hand on my knee and the other near my head in a pinch gesture. I say, in the softest and most gentle tone I can, can I eat one? Thinking, can I have one, might not be clear enough. As I'm saying that, he lowers his hand. I stand like that for a second or two, thinking about how embarrassing it is to have my joke flop completely. I hear some noise, and suddenly I am hit in the face, rather on my hat and maybe on my mask. Not with force, but enough to reflexively move my head back. 
I return to my previous position and see a semi-open mouth, open small hand, two inches from my eyes. I notice the hand lines with small grains on top. The father, as his son hits me, miscalculating my height, shouts, eh, making a step towards us. I understand the kid is trying to hand feed me. Incredulous and amused, I play along, my hat hiding my mask from the child. I position my mask just above his hand, leaving about an inch between. The father yells, what? Silence for about a second. I expect him to push me or something. What have I done? The only thing I think of doing is simulating chewing, making grain chewing noises, and bobbing my head like an animal, similarly to Jim Carrey as Count Olaf. As I do this, the father interrupts in extremely loud laughter. <laughs> the child turns his head abruptly to his dad. I know from the sound his jacket makes. I stop fake chewing the dad as the son turns, nah, still laughing, barely being able to speak. I immediately restart fake chewing as I hear the jacket again. The child is conflicted as to what is happening a few seconds later, still bent. I turn my head to the dad and start laughing, too. The child turns his head several times to his dad, then me, then figures out a whole grown-up male from his own species does not feed himself like a bird. <laughs> Cute childlike laughter. The mother joins in. She asks her man what is happening, and she doesn't see clearly from the other side of the trail. The, four, the poor father can barely speak. He tries explaining, but nothing sensible is heard. She comes nearer to check what the commotion is all about. What? What? She understands and starts laughing, too. We're all laughing genuine laughter. I back out and stand up, say it's a joke, and start leaving. The father asked me something. I know. I now think he tried to understand how oh, his son understood I pretended I needed to be fed, but I couldn't understand him and embarrassed. I reacted weirdly by laughing and leaving. I turned a few times to see the father still trying to contain his laughter. When he finally manages to stand and stop laughing, I see his son dancing. I think it was some kind of oriental dance because he was rotating his wrist and looking to the side as his mom cheered him on. I erupted in laughter again, pointing to the son. The father turns to see what is happening. He glances over and sees what I think is a similar sight to him. I, he quickly turns back to the tree and starts laughing again, a surprised silent laugh that has him bent completely nonetheless. He shakes his head, trying to recover his composure. I leave with this wholesome memory and story to tell. I'm glad it went well and made everyone laugh. I estimate that it all happened in about three minutes. I remember the details months later, probably because I recalled it many times as an embarrassment invariably gets me amused and smiling and i think this is absolutely precious because one we all need good happy stories and this this was adorable you confused the parents at first but then like you got them laughing and all that and i think that's precious and i think we're gonna end this story this episode here so I hope you all enjoyed being a part of the story nook. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe so that you'll know when new episodes come out. Comment down below what kind of stories you want to hear from me next. Uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify, go ahead and follow so that you'll get notified when new episodes of the podcast come out. And, yeah, have a lovely day. Bye-bye.